Hello and welcome to Jazz After Dark, everybody. How you doing today? All is good for you? We'll be enjoying, I uh, hope you got a drink to enjoy with me here tonight, but we're going to be enjoying uh, Woodford Reserve, straight up. This actually came uh, when I bought my airplane. It's not a jet. I don't have a jet. It's a little airplane. But when I bought the airplane, the uh, broker actually sent this to me and uh, kind of etched their name on it and stuff. Really cool people, actually. Incredibly, incredibly helpful. Uh, so this will be enjoyed on them, the Woodford Reserve. Had it before. Love it. A little on the dry side. You know, I like uh, sweet and spice together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm excited. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited to have this tonight. Very tasty. Um, we are financial advisors here, Jazz Wealth, and Jazz After Dark is kind of a simulation of our wine and wealth that we do for clients every Thursday. Um, kind of a hodgepodge of things that we can talk about, but I like to go a little deeper with them and uh, you know, help clients in, in all different aspects, rental properties, investments, anything that we can touch there that helps them, of course, uh, want to spark some questions. And, and maybe I'll spark some questions from you guys. But what happened was I was sort of thinking of ideas and I was just browsing around and stuff. And I saw this article about really weird ETFs. And I was like, yeah, I, I remember there were some weird ETFs. They're not as popular anymore because it is costly to start an ETF. Um, we've been approached numerous times here at Jazz for us to take our funds and make them an ETF. Uh, if you're not familiar, we, we build our own custom funds here and it'll be like the aggressive stock fund or the dividend fund. And uh, then we manage them individually very much and exactly like an ETF. Um, but because we keep them private to clients, uh, then there, there's no regulation that says we have to make them an ETF. Uh, so, uh, it's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, you're like, you got to have, I mean, now we could do it. We have enough in, uh, assets in each one of these funds. Uh, we manage just over $300 million. So we can certainly do that. But uh, man, you're talking like $720,000 to start an ETF. That's just to start it. Yeah, you got to, you know, then get people to invest in it. But yeah, there's a lot of them out there that are still clunking along. And uh, I know I have my favorites, but uh, by all means, what we talk about tonight, this is not a suggestion for you to go buy these. I'm just reviewing the fact that these are oddball ETFs. And uh, I'd like to start with one that I think is really funny. Uh, I haven't really looked at the details yet, so we're going to do this together. Um, and of course, this is not a recommendation. You know, consult with your financial advisor. If I am your financial advisor, let's talk about it. But otherwise... Uh, of course, this is just for educational purposes only, yada, yada, you know what we're doing. Um, Jim Cramer. So I, I had forgot about this. This was, this is a fairly new ETF, but uh, people say, well, if, if Jim Cramer's that great, why don't I just invest with what he does? And by the way, Jim Cramer historically is at about 56 to 54% accurate on his winners. And people give him grief for that. Would you know that that's better than the market? Like his hit rate or his percent positive rate is better than just the average return of a stock if you were to throw a dart or something, right? So, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not stellar, but he's building a portfolio. And I don't give the man any grief for that because he does better than the market. So uh, let's do it here. The first one is called LJIM, Long Jim Cramer. Oh, you can't see. I'm sorry. So come over here. This is the ETF, LJIM, and it's it's pretty new. Um, so let's see. Yeah, it is very new. Um, so the idea is that they invest just basically the stocks that Jim Cramer recommends there. So we got to look at the stocks and see what he's recommending. Ooh. Uh, so total assets under management. You guys got to look at these when you pick your ETFs. $501,922. So someone out there right now has more than $500,000 in your account, your savings, your retirement or whatever. If you were to put that all into long Jim Cramer, I guarantee you'd get a phone call from the people that run this fund because you would be 50% of the assets that they manage, right? So eh, careful. That's the first one there. It's obviously not that popular. Um, okay, let's see the holdings here. 
So uh, we're at top 25 holding. Let's see all the holdings. All right, so we've got, uh, so it's slightly weighted. I don't know how they come up with the weighting decision there because uh, Jim Cramer doesn't normally say that from what I remember when he had hair and when I had hair. Uh, NVIDIA, Meta, I understand. Lily. Okay. So these are the stocks he's talking about, recommending and stuff along the way. And this is, this is current. This is up to date. There's 37 total holdings there. And uh, the performance, yeah, leaves a little bit to be desired. If we were to go to, say, over here, and go like to, well so this is the whole performance so he's down uh 1.97 percent let's try the spy um so over the length of time that this fund has been available this is not year to date this is not year or anything over the length of time that this fund's been out there i know it's bleeding off the screen a little he's at 1.97 2.53 to the positive for the s p but you're not really giving him a lot of time here so th this is a new fund um, let's try the short one. So S Jim is if you want to be short Jim Cramer's ideas here. Uh, best there's uh, yeah, they're basically going the opposite. Um, and let's make sure they're doing that first because uh, the holdings. Let me make sure. Okay, so they're not using anything crazy here. Uh, so the holdings, of course, accounted for there, um, and. This may be, I don't know why they're long. Uh, this may be the last of the remaining positions that he had. Maybe he's long on these now. That's not, that's a little odd. We should be seeing negative numbers here. So uh, let's go back to the overview. Uh, no, sorry, the quote. So if we go back here, it's approximately the opposite. So yeah, they, so they don't have to be all short Jim Cramer. Uh, but wow, look at this down here. So <laughs> what does that tell you? $4.85 million uh, is what they, um, obviously this one is 10 times more popular. So people must believe that, wow, and 1.2%, Jesus. So it costs you 1.2% to be, do the opposite of Kramer. That, that's a little excessive. Um, but obviously people believe that, yeah, because these funds came out at the same time. So these people believe that if I had to pick a direction to go with Jim Cramer, people were betting on the short side. Um, technically, they'd be right uh, because if we put, would they be right? Well, let's let's pit them against each other. So if we go, that's short Jim, long Jim. So if we pit these things against each other, they should be about the same. But that's because the short fund doesn't go a hundred percent short. I'm sorry, it's cutting. I'm gonna go like this. Yeah, it's a little better. Um, so yeah, it's not an exact one for one because of those long positions still left in there. Uh, but, um, you're doing a little bit worse being short Jim Cramer than long. However, all the money is over here. <laughs> so that's an interesting one. Very, very cool. Oh, anyways. Uh, well, what's another one here? So what are they talking about? Um, well, this one's kind of popular actually. So UFO is the ticker symbol. And it's not, it's not like aliens or anything. This one's been around a little bit longer because uh, I remember talking about this during COVID. Are they still going? Yeah, all right. So uh, this is, it's called UFO. And the idea, you can read over here if you want to read it, but the idea is that basically anything that has to do with space, right? So if we look at the holdings, you probably see, yeah, look, you got satellite companies in here. You got providers for the little widgets and things that go inside of the satellite companies. You're going to have somewhere in here, Lockheed Martin, I bet. Ooh, Virgin Galactic. That's a tough one. Uh, there it is. Northrop Grumman. Right, uh, so it's down off the screen. I'm sorry. But you got Northrop Grumman um, and things like that. So anything that goes into space. And a lot of people think these, these are kind of interesting companies to invest in because that's sort of the next frontier, right? And we're actually making progress towards that. 47.9 million, so a lot of participation there. Little less uh, of an expense ratio there, and you get a slight dividend for participating as well. This is gonna be more volatile. Uh, take out your Boeing, take out your you know Lockheed Martins and stuff. This sort of thing's gonna be a little more volatile. Actually, uh, max drawdowns, 48%. Now, I bet you that that's during COVID. So you got a market dropping of about 33%, and you've got this falling 48%. You got to be willing to take a little more volatility, but that's pretty cool. 
Um, definitely a unique type e ETF. Um, so yeah, see what you think. Oh, my favorite. Uh, not my favorite. I just think it's funny that this is an ETF. Uh, it's called Vice. Let's go take a look here. So it, this is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, Vice is stuff. They invest in stuff that people consider a vice. Uh, alcohol and tobacco would be an obvious one. Uh, yeah, alcohol. so they do alcohol and tobacco. Uh, companies that derive at least 50% of their net revenue from food and beverage industry, snacks, uh, maybe Hershey's in here or something. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I'm guilty there. Uh, but so if you look inside of here, uh, gambling, right? There's Boyd, Boyd Gaming. This one's not for everybody. You got Monarch Casinos down in here. Uh, some other properties that have casinos on there. Some hotel properties that have casinos on there. Um, uh, Molson Coors down here just off the screen. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so if you're into that stuff and you say, you know what? Uh, when the economy's good or bad, people are going to buy this stuff. And you would be right this year. Very good. Uh, so look at what's happened this year. Uh, the vices are keeping pace with the market. The market's up just about uh, just over 8%. It's actually about a 1% difference there. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, a little pricey there in the expense ratio. Um, how many holdings do they have? So we've got a total of 28 holdings. And we could probably look historically. Um, so we've got some changes here, actually. Uh, so turning point, Hershey's taking a little bit of a bump up uh, in their place. So it was at 4.41%. Now it's at about a 5%. So a little adjustments, more of an active fund. Do they say they're an active fund? Uh, yeah, it doesn't really say. I can't see anything here, but uh, very cool. And I find that interesting because right now the defensive type stocks, the vices, your consumer staples, uh, things that people will just participate in. You know, we're going to buy Coke. We're going to buy Pepsi and their products. Alcohol, right? I mean, it's one of those things that you might buy. A, uh, you might go less extravagant. You know, you might not buy fancy bottles of wine or anything. It's one of those things that their people are going to actually participate in in any economic cycle. So I've always found that one interesting. I think if if you had to ask me to run an ETF, um, I'd be I'd be very interested in uh, something like that just because. Uh, Seems pretty straightforward. The positions themselves likely don't change that often because there's only so there's 28 names they got to follow. But uh, the percentage that you participate in, very likely something um, that they, well, as we can see, that they change quite often there. Um, so, for example, uh, you wonder like, hey, why Hershey? What's going on there? You know, why do they have that? Well, look at Hershey. It's on freaking fire. We are spending money on that stuff, 119% here over the last three years. So we go year to date, we're just smoking the market. Hershey, <laughs> Her, you know, Hershey kisses, that's what it is. Um, fascinating. So um, I enjoy looking at these things. I don't look at, you know, weird ETFs all the time, but I do like to look at ETFs and see what they're doing. Um, there's a lot of them that will report daily. Uh, it's not officially a rule that they have to do that uh, anymore, but. Uh, very cool to see those kind of things. There's others out there that are focused. They're not so interesting maybe for you guys, but they are weird. Uh, there's others that are focused on the bond market where they take a tax-free product and essentially leverage it so that you're participating in hopefully higher total yield, but still have that uh, the 60-40 uh, uh, advantage there. Uh, it's a gray area in the tax code, but there's things like that. They're just not as cool as like Vice, man. Oh, that's cool. Um, fun fact, uh, Vice, uh, way back, there used to be an adult entertainment club. And even if I did remember the name, I would still pause like this and pretend like I couldn't remember the name. Uh, I, darn it, I really can't remember it. Buds or Riches, um, there, it was a public company and they, it was an adult, adult entertainment club. They were taking the model Oh, and it was in here, but they were taking the model of like, have you noticed how like your doggy daycares, they're kind of all the same company. So there's like these big companies that go buy up the little ones and just change the name. Uh, funeral homes, that's really popular there. They thought they would take that model and apply it to, you know, the, the dance clubs. And uh, I don't think it worked out for them. I think it was Rich's Dance or Rich's Cabaret. It was something like that when it was out. Um, 
but they're they're I don't think they're any longer. They didn't make it. Um, that's your fault, not mine. Anyways, uh, I hope you had fun tonight. Just a little different way of looking at things. I was just watching this article or reading this article, and I'm like, that's yeah, kind of interesting. You know, different way to look at things. Remember, it's very costly to set these up. And if you look at an ETF, please look at the assets under management and then take one extra second and go look at the, when the market's open, look at the bid and the offer. We want to see those two numbers close together. In other words, you have a buyer and you have a seller. We don't want them to be far apart. That means if you place a market order, what price do you think you're going to pay? You're going to pay the highest price that the seller, the lowest price that the seller is willing to sell, which is going to be way higher than the bid price. So there's a lot of little traps there. If you're using those free, uh, you know, like a Robin Hood or something, and you just go market order, e, that's going to be costly. You could literally get in and then get out and you would have lost money uh, without the stock moving. So careful there. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for joining me here tonight. And uh, yeah, adios. <laughs>